Welcome back to Learn With A Classic and if you're new to my channel I hope you stick around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar and Classic car related content and today is finally the day where we hopefully hear that 4.2 liter straight 6 in my 1975 XJ6 roar into your life. If you're new and you haven't followed along, I bought this car uh, around Christmas with a blown head gasket and then and sometime in January I started taking it apart and we've been going through in the series the whole cylinder head, checking that it was straight, uh, lapping the valves, putting everything back together, the correct valve shims, putting that back on, rebuilding the carbs, putting all that back on, and then cleaning up everything in the engine bay to make it presentable. So if you haven't seen any of this, I'll put a link to a playlist up above and down below that you can check out where I have all the videos and all the work that's been done in this car and there is a lot. And now it's all basically together. There are a few little last things I have to check that we will do in a second. And then we can turn the key and hopefully it will fire up right away. Uh, some things have been done before you've seen it last. I put all the coolant hoses in place, all new fuel hoses. I've changed the oil, but I haven't really put in the final oil I'm going to have. Because what was in it before was really sludgy and quite dark. Uh, so I don't want to pour a brand new nice oil in there it's going to get dirty right away also i might have got some contaminants in there so i want to clean it out so i put a little bit of thinner oil it's supposed to be a 20 w50 in here but i put a 1030 oil i'm just going to use just to start it up i'm not going to run the car on it for long max half an hour and i just want that to go through everywhere and basically clean the inside of the engine then i'm going to flush that out put a new filter on once more and then pour in the nice oil i want to use so just that's just the way I like to clean the inside of an engine. I think it works really well. Of course, when I get it back on the road, I'm not going to drive that long on that new oil, even the nice new oil I'm putting in a 2050. Uh, so after a few weeks or so of driving it, I'm going to get rid of that and put in new oil again. And then it should be back on a regular oil change maintenance. So let's head over to the car and I'll show you what's left to do before we can turn the key. Almost everything is ready for the first start. All the coolant hoses are new, all the fuel hoses are also new, there's coolant in there, I've changed the oil, but before I turn it over I want to make sure I have oil pressure, so I've removed the spark plugs, put a little bit of oil down in each cylinder, and we're going to crank it over on the starter for a while just to make sure that oil pressure shows on the gauge. So let's go into the car and see if we have oil pressure. I still have the fuel pump disconnected and I've disconnected the ignition. So it should just crank over and we'll have a look at the oil pressure gauge there. The uh, warning light for the oil, oil pressure doesn't seem to work. It didn't work before so I think the switch is bad so I'm going to order a new one. But let's have a look at the gauge that did work before. And oil pressure is building. And I think that's good. There's oil pressure. Almost went up to 40 there during cranking. So now we can go back and do some of the last things while in the fuel system and the ignition system. That's really fantastic that I built oil pressure that quickly. So now I'm putting the spark plugs back in. I have one more left to do. Uh, when I put those in, I'm going to tighten them all down. Then I can put the distributor cap back on and all the plugs off of that. I set the timing stackly, so I rotated the engine over to 8 degrees, so the timing is set at 8 degrees before top dead center, which should be correct. I'm going to check it later, of course, with a timing light, but it should fire off. So I'm going to put those back on, and then it's time to go over to the carbs. And I haven't touched them all, so I'm going to set them up to make sure that they're pretty even to start out with and have a basic tune. So I'll show you how to do that as well. For now, I'm putting back on the old cap and the old leads. It did run with these before, but I cleaned them up just a little bit. I do have a new set on order, but these should be fine to start it up with. And new ones to order are some pretty cool ones. So that will be a good surprise coming up. So put the cap back on there. And all the leads should go up there. With the ignition system in place and all set up, it's time to have a look at the carbs. I did rebuild them before, so I haven't touched the settings, but I want to set them up in a basic tune. So the easiest way to do that is to remove top. I've already removed the screws. And to remove the piston. Here is the mixture adjustment. And there you have the jet. So you can see now if I turn it in, it goes deeper in. If I turn it out, it comes back up. So I want to turn it back up until it's as flush as it will get with up here. About there 
it's all the way flush now. So I'm gonna turn it in one and a half turns. A half, one, and a half. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to this one here so they're set up equally. And that is a tune that it should start and run pretty well. Of course, I'm gonna tune it later, but it'll be a completely separate video on tuning SU carburetors. So I'm also gonna do is set up the butterflies here. So I'm gonna slacken those up all the way, loosen these nuts here. Also turn those in one and a half turns after all the way slack. And that should also be a pretty okay idle to start up. So I'm gonna do that now, put this all back together, put some oil in here and a dampener, and then ready to see if the fuel system will hold fuel and if there are any leaks. Now the carbs are back together. I filled them up with oil and I've hooked up the fuel pump again. So it's time to see if there are any fuel leaks. So I'm just gonna turn on the ignition, let the pump fill up the carburetors and hopefully there won't be any leaks. All right, fuel pump is pumping away. And now it's shutting off, so there should be pressure. And checking the overflows. All right, there's a leak from one of the overflows, so I'm gonna turn that off. All right, so it's actually the next day because the leak was not from the overflow. The leak was from the hose down there, the pipe that goes between the float chamber and the jet. Because I guess I got a little unlucky when I installed it because there's supposed to be a little o-ring. Let's see if I can focus on it. And it got damaged when I put it in somehow, so I was a little unlucky. Unfortunately, I can't really get these locally and I can only get them sent over from the UK and the manufacturer are not sending out right now according to their website because of the coronavirus. However, I went to an auto parts store and I got these little o-rings. They're made out of fuel resistant rubber so they should work. They are the same size it's just that they're round o-rings instead of square. So I put one in and it's actually holding fuel right now but I have ordered some of these so I'm going to put, put in the original ones but I really, I can't wait any longer to try and start this up. So there are no leaks right now. I hooked the battery back up. So I'm gonna set up the camera, turn the key, and let's see if this thing fires up. Fingers crossed, it's gonna start up. And a few minutes later, there was a lot of failures. So I went out and I realized that the AED is stuck on. There's something stuck inside. So I quickly removed this crossover pipe and I just put these little hoses over to fit with some plugs in them. It's the best I could find, some old spark plugs to blank off that. And it cranked over right away and it ran pretty well. There are some weird sounds up here I'll show you in a bit. I think it's the jockey wheel for the power steering that's making a little bit of weird noise. I took a screwdriver with, against my ear and listened around the cam chain or snuffing that. There's something down here making a little bit of a funny sound. Uh, other than that, there's a little bit of a coolant leak coming up here. So that is pretty common. Now after I've run it up to temperature and retorqued the head, that should stop leaking. At least I hope so, otherwise that kind of sucks because it filled up that spark plug well. So I'm gonna dry this off, set up the camera, Engine is still a little bit toasty hot and I'll turn it over and you can hear it run. It's not tuned or anything at all, but at least it runs now with this out. So there's a lot left to do, try and figure out why this thing is not working. Again, have a look at the sounds up there. 
but I'm gonna turn it over now and you can hear it run. Hopefully it's gonna fire right up. There we go. And it is building oil pressure. So it's coming up kind of slowly. And temperature is a little bit coming up. So let's have a look. So yeah. Kind of good pulling coming out there, but I'm hoping that after I retorque it, that will stop leaking. Otherwise, it sounds really nice. It sounds nice and strong. See, the exhaust. Yeah, I made quite a mess when it was very rich, but it has very, very strong exhaust pulses. So at least it feels like it has a lot of compression. At least it's finally running. Still a lot of issues to fix, but it's running. So after I turned the camera off, I ran the engine for about another 10 minutes just sitting here idling in the workshop and the leak stopped. There are no more coolant leaks, so that's really great. I am still gonna retorque the head, but I'll do that after a test drive. But it runs, and I'm really happy about that. So now I can drain out the oil that's in there. It's a really thin oil I used just to start it up with, to clean it out with, to get all the gunk out from in there, because it was pretty nasty, the old oil that came out. So I'm gonna pour in some nice uh, 20W50 Castrol Classic, Put on a new oil filter again, and then I can start tuning it, setting everything up. I'm also going to figure out what's wrong with the AED, why it's flooding. So we'll make a separate video on tuning SU carburetor. I know a lot of you guys want to see that. Then I'm going to put the hood back on, put the ducting on here, put the brake master cylinder back in, bleed the brakes, and then we can go out for a test drive. And that's it for today's episode, and I'm so happy that it runs. Yeah, there were a few last minute problems, and there always is. It's kind of what you need to expect when you're working on a car. Things don't always go to plan. It's not like on a TV show where everything is perfect. I always show you guys when things happen, mistakes happen. So yeah, I made a mistake. I broke that O-ring, putting it all back together. Things happen like that. But now at least it's fixed. Uh, I am going to put in an original one, of course. But I just really want to start it up. And it runs now. Some issues with the AED. I will have a look at that, I'm not really sure what happened, but it worked, like you said, I'm gonna turn it right away, but then it just flooded, so that pipe got ice cold. So for some reason, it just it went on full fueling and it flooded out the engine. So I'm gonna have a look at that. Maybe there's something I did wrong when I put it back together. Uh, but it lifts the top really quickly and everything looked fine inside. So I think it's uh, some adjustment or maybe one of the bimetals is a little wonky, but I have some spare, so I'm gonna go through that and fix that up. I'm going to change the oil again, put in the nice oil I want to use, and then we're going to tune it. So that will be a future video coming up on how to tune SU carburetors. We'll get this thing sounding really nice and sweet. Um, I went through some of the footage before I filmed this here, and I heard that on the camera the engine sounds a little, little bit tappy. It doesn't sound like that in real life. It is a little bit noisier than it would be normally with the thin oil, but it doesn't sound the way it sounds on camera. It's a lot quieter in real life. So don't worry, I don't think it's broken or anything, it just has the way it sounds on the microphone on my camera. It actually sounds really sweet and really strong. I'm also kind of interested to do a compression test, so I'm going to do that in a future uh, video if you guys want to see that. See if the compression is up now and see if it's nice and even with the new head gasket. And hopefully it should be. So pretty soon it'll be a test drive, I'm just going to fix the brakes, uh, change the oil, do a little bit of a basic tune, and then we can go out and test drive it. So that will be coming up really soon as well. If you like this video, please hit that like button, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. I put new videos every week on some Jaguar Classic car related content. So if you like that kind of stuff and you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe to the channel. So until next time, I'm Adam and this was Luma for Classic. I'll see you soon.